All right, guys, today we're going to talk about what might possibly be the ultimate hiking and just general purpose Alaskan made blade. Now, what I mean by Alaskan made is this might not always be the best blade for Alaska, but this is made in Alaska. It's made by one of my friends. Now, of course, if you've been around the channel, I've done a couple kind of podcast styled videos with my friend Ryder, and he makes some pretty wicked blades. And this just so happens to be one of those wicked blades. Now this one is a bit of a prototype that he let me borrow and uh, use so that I can test it run it through its paces while he actually is making mine. Now mine will look a little bit different. Hopefully it will have some purple um, carbon fiber scales on it because that's my hope. As you guys probably know, I love me some good carbon fiber, but I do hope to have something like this in my collection, hopefully before the end of the year, but we will see of course on that. However, that doesn't change the fact that we still have a really freaking cool blade here. Now, this is not the first time for those dedicated subscribers that you've probably seen this knife on the channel. It was just when it was first unveiled um, last winter, kind of around December time frame. It was a uh, prototype and Ryder wasn't sure he was actually going to fully make this into a full-fledged blade, but he did. He put a bevel on it and I kind of cleaned up that bevel. Hopefully you guys can see there a little bit. I cleaned up the bevel, just made it a little bit more straight a little bit more even of course on a wicked edge so it is extra slicey but this thing is pretty freaking cool and I have to say this is probably one of my favorite knives that he's made so far so I was of course super super pumped to actually like get this in hand test it play with it and of course use it so what you're looking at here is a model that hopefully is should be like a regular or semi-regular of course these are being handmade so there's a little bit of uh you know like as far as consistency of like being made there's a little bit um you know like still working on it but as far as it goes this is what he's going to call the TW-R and what that essentially stands for as you guys can probably see here it may sound a little bit weird but it stands for teeth walker tooth walker regular and essentially the, what that means is his um kind of like big draw and kind of Alaskan animal of choice is the is the walrus and we don't have a huge amount of walruses but certainly we do have some presence of them and his uh, logo has the walrus there on it so this is kind of meant to be a you know um mean kind of fierce hard use blade kind of inspired off of the life of like walruses they're very hard rugged you know tough animals their skin their hide is thick and they're just mean creatures right so that is kind of where this knife draws some of its inspiration and that's where it gets its name from now similar to that hardcore hard use um kind of you know application you'll notice that this tip on here i think is what catches most people's eyes and of course this is a compound grind with a um, hollow grind here and then a flat grind here and a flat grind here and what that allows you to do with this particular blade is really use it as more of a pry tool towards the tip or kind of a chisel almost if you will what that can bring for you if you need that pry tip is it just gives you a lot of robust strength and of course some cutting ability towards the tip now of course if you do use this in more industrialized applications you will probably dole out these bevels but the nice thing is you shouldn't really be able to snap that tip off because it has a very strong swedge to it which gives it a lot of extra reinforcement and it is very much designed to be used and abused toward the tip of the blade so to give you some so to give you some reference on what a normal knife tip would usually look like, here is a large Nkosi, and you can see that this is a very narrow, very thin, very unsupported tip. Now normally that's not a huge problem, and I'm not saying that, you know, the is a bad knife because of that, but obviously you wouldn't want to go prying and hard using it. Whereas with the TWR, it is very much more reinforced, robust, and designed for hard use applications. 
So that's what makes it pretty darn freaking cool. And moreover too, what I like about it for outdoor and kind of just hiking use is that that tip gives you a wider variety of um, just situations and circumstances where you can press that into play and not have to worry about potentially damaging your knife. It gives you a little bit more of a robust insurance, so to speak. Now, another thing I really do like is the ergonomics are pretty darn squared away. I think what interests me the most about these ergonomics is they look so basic and, you know, like not necessarily anything particularly crazy, but they're just well refined. When you go hold the blade, you have very nice chamfers all around it. There's really no sharp edges on anything and it's just super smooth, super comfortable. And at least for me, it fits pretty darn well. And I think for most people, it will too. Last thing I think that really stands out to me is that this has a really nice working finish on it. You guys can see it's a uh just a nice like um, stone wash basic to it or basically to it and uh, it's just a really good general purpose finish you know it I think it catches the light in the camera and it doesn't look as um, kind of worn I guess you could say like a lot of stone wash finishes have this kind of you know worn aesthetic to them so this looks a lot cleaner I think on the camera at least through the viewfinder it's looking a lot cleaner than it actually is but rest assured, it is definitely a user and an abuser. So overall, it is pretty darn cool. And I think initially when I saw this knife, what captured me was one, you have this really nice rugged looking finish on the blade and you have this beautiful fat camo carbon fiber. And it just looks like such a good pairing. I really do love the way that this thing has come together. And overall, I think the aesthetics are pretty freaking cool. Um, once again, aesthetics will always be, you know, one of those things where you either like them or you don't, but I think overall it looks pretty darn good. And if you kind of look at it from this perspective, it looks a little bit like a walrus tusk where it just kind of has a slight taper down to a tip, so to speak, because there's really no like piercing tip on this blade. It's definitely more of a pry tip, but uh, you know, you kind of have that nice gentle slow down to the tip and then you know you kind of just have that tip so overall it is pretty darn cool looking I don't know I really like the aesthetics of this some people might not some people might say you know like oh you're just biased because you know he's your friend and there's probably some of that too but I think it's just really cool when you see a maker just putting out such a freaking cool unique blade that uh, you just want to freaking you know, you're just like attracted to it and you want to freaking use it. You want to run it and it's just cool. So I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think this thing's pretty dang dope. As far as it goes to, um, there's not too much more to say. This one is made out of ABL and uh, I think a lot of people really, like ABL was a more popular steel, um, you know, in the mid 20 teens. And so it's kind of fallen out of favor. But to be honest, when it comes down to it, I'm not entirely sure what rider will actually end up using for his knives in the end. There is some talk of like using Magna Cut and stuff, which would certainly be more popular, I think. But when it comes down to it, uh, Honestly, like ABL, as I've said in the past, is a perfectly fine steel. It's one of those that's kind of like D2. It's kind of like Nitro V 14C28N, um, you know, where a lot of people look at it and they're just like, oh, you know, that steel, like they, they think it's not a great steel. And don't be wrong, you know, obviously everyone's going to have their own opinion on steel. But honestly, I think like ABL is from a performance standpoint, like just fine. It's a very tough steel. It can take an absolute pounding. It's kind of like the non um, powdered metal version of CPM 3D. It's a very, very tough steel that is absolutely designed to take a pounding. So in this particular use application, I think ABL makes a lot of sense and it's just fine. And these guys are coming in at a pretty hard heat treat of right around 60 to 61 HRC. So once again, you have a lot of that upfront toughness and uh, edge retention that you're going to see out of ABL. So Anyways, obviously it does come in a nice pancake styled sheath, as you guys can see there, Kydex sheath, I should say, with a couple drain holes. This one has an ulti clip on it. Once again, this is all a little bit of a prototype. The end um, look may change a little bit, but for the most part, I think that this is pretty much how it's gonna look. And honestly, I don't hate that at all. I think it's pretty darn cool. I'm just excited, like I said, uh, to finally get mine when it's finally ready, uh, to have some like really awesome purple fat camo carbon 
fiber scales on there. I think it will just look so freaking cool. But this one also looks dope. Definitely expect to see a lot more of this one on the channel. And once again, I'm just going to be, you know, kind of uh, using this one, playing around with it until mine is ready. So anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at this awesome Alaskan made um, fixed blade and I think it's really well done. My friend Ryder has been in the knife industry for a very long time and knows a lot of people, goes to a lot of trade shows, things like um, USN, things like Blade Show and stuff. So he definitely knows um, you know, what's up in the knife industry and owns a ton of really cool knives, things like you know Sabenza 25s and tons and tons of especially striders. So you'll definitely see a lot of strider inspiration in these blades blades, which I think is really cool because I think Strider's kind of like, uh, you know, like not a lot of people talk about Strider nowadays and Strider kind of flies under the radar, but like if you know them, you know them. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you enjoyed taking a look at this TWR as more becomes available on this knife, like where to get it, how to get one, um, where to order them. I will definitely do more videos and of course put links down in the description below so that you guys can get them because I originally previewed this knife back when it was like a full-on prototype and asked people, you know, like, what do you think of this thing? You know, um, and tried to get a consensus and everyone wanted to freaking buy it. It's just, he really couldn't because he wasn't able to make them really up to spec. Anyways, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video as always. God bless. And I'm out.